Mm. Hey guys, what's up? Here we are again, another weekly update, the old S1000. Where are we at today? So basically you've caught me right in the middle of putting in the i2M dash, you know, the blinky light. I ordered this stuff from HSBK, the mounting brackets, the conversion harness, and one other little special sensor that I've been meaning to get on my bikes for like five years. But anyway, I'll show you that here in a second. First, let's talk about data logging and why you wanna consider it if you're more in tune with your bike. I look at data logging as being very, very helpful because typically I'm by myself, so I'm kind of self-coaching, which is exactly what that dash can do or any data logging system can do, like the AIM Solo 2 DL. Data logging can be complicated because most of the time people don't know what to do with it. And I'm not saying I know what to do with it. All right, let's just make that very, very clear at the, right up front. I am taking a wild stab at a lot of this stuff, but I do try to base it in something solid. For instance, Ken Hill has a really interesting way of going about how to improve riders. So he has a way of looking at data that I find very, very interesting. And you don't have to have a data logger per se to do it. Just a regular lap timer, a GPS based lap timer can do it. So there's a video he put out about looking at the slowest points of the corner and where your times versus a reference time, key part there, reference, where those times match up. Because if you just put in one lap and go, well, how did I go fast? You have nothing to compare it to. If you have no one else's data like Nolan Lampkin, for instance, he's got data from his R6 Moto America days. He put that up there on his website. So if you go to Nolan Lampkin's page, which I'll link in the description, he's got some data from a lot of the bigger Moto America track, which you can compare to. I don't care what bike you're on. Slowest part of the corner is still the slowest part of the corner. R6 versus 1000 versus FZ09, or it doesn't matter. If you're a track day guy looking to improve, these are some great references that you guys can go out and try to attain to. So anyway, the slowest point in the corner, Ken Hill has an awesome video about it. I'm gonna link it right up there. That way you guys can take a look at it and not listen to me say it, but listen to him say it because he knows way more about it than I do. Let's get back to what's happening here and now. Data logging, the I2M on the S1000. There's some things you need to know about. If you have an S1000, specifically if you have a 2015 to 2018, the bike must have a couple different things on it in order for that dash to work properly. Number one, you must have the HP calibration. That is literally the BMW race electronics flashed to the ECU, okay? That's number one, you have to have that. Also, you have to have an aftermarket left side switch. And the reason why is because the, the, the traction control sensitivity up or down toggle that's on the left side switch has to be connected to the dash, okay? The ABS on or off, because you can turn the ABS off. Like for instance, well, let's back up. ABS meaning the dynamic traction control stuff, which has to do with the ABS, essentially means that it wants to control how both wheels are reacting to the surface. And if you run off in the gravel and you go to get out of the gravel, it will literally stop that from happening. So you have to turn the ABS off for a second so you can spin the tire and get out. If you're on a dyno, you have to be able to let the front wheel be showing zero miles an hour while you're spinning the dyno, okay? So there's a little switch on the left-hand side that does that. It just says ABS and you press and hold it for two seconds and it starts flashing on the dash. So you have to have an aftermarket left side switch. I2M makes a left side switch, incidentally, that plugs right into the dash and has all these connections built into it. So you don't have to do any wiring yourself. They do provide a little connector with like just bare wires that you can cut and splice and make your other buttons that you can get from Apex or 39N or whoever else makes a button kit. Uh, you can make that work. But I2M makes a left side switch. I like it a lot because first of all, it just bolts right in. I, I like easy things, okay? That's easy. Also, the traction control up or down is a little bit different than other button kits, like Jet Prime, for instance. Jet Prime has the buttons where you're pressing up on with your thumb, up or down. On I2Ms, they have up with the thumb, down with the index finger. It's got a little angle toggle switch. Anyway, it's kind of cool. It's just neat. It bolts in, it plugs in, and it goes. That's what's important. You'll notice on the button kit, that there are extra buttons, okay? Battery's done charging. Any day now. There we go. So you notice on that button switch over there, there's going to be some extra buttons that aren't used. That's for a ZX10 or an R1 because that's kind of a multi-purpose button pod. It says YEC on it, for instance, there's a YEC pit button limiter button, okay? Whereas in the S1000, that's gonna be actually the start switch 
They do a lot of things with the, <laughs> with the right side over here. Uh, the start switch is the launch control. When you're in gear, clutch in, I think. I'll figure that out later. But anyway, it does, you do some other stuff over here. So that's not something that I wanna actually mess with. I don't care about pit limiters. Nobody has a pit, pit uh, lane speed limit. So like, what do I care about that, okay? But you could wire it in, all right? So that button pod does have extra buttons that aren't used that you could wire in if you so choose. If you really like this video, please hit the like button, comment below. I really appreciate it. I love interacting with you guys. Let's all do this together maybe and have an actual community effort on this thing. Appreciate it. Okay, so let's power it up and take a look at what is going on. Sorry about the zip ties and everything. You'll notice it takes a while to actually get booted up all the way. So, Red lights on here right now. Those are basically like when you have the stock dash hooked up and the ABS light is still kicked on. That's what this top one is. This bottom one here, I'm not really sure what that is. I'll figure that out later. So anyway, if we come over here to mode and you look right here where it says rain, press that once and then I can start selecting through. You can just press it and it flips over to sport. Now a little zero right there to the right of it has to do with the traction level. So if I press positive on my little button over here, that number goes up all the way to seven. And that's the last it can go. Now, if you switch mode, so if I wanted to switch from sport to say race, it stays at that sensitivity setting, setting that you applied on the left side clip on. Now, here's where it gets interesting. If you haven't noticed, there's this blue line right here, this blue cable. This guy is actually, let me see if I can unscrew it right here. That blue line is attached to this sensor. This is a brake pressure sensor. Always wanted to see what I'm doing with the actual brake side. How much pressure am I putting in? Am I not putting in enough pressure? Am I putting in multiple pressures into a corner or am I just going one big squeeze and then letting off like you're supposed to? Who knows, but that's not gonna lie. That guy right there is worth its weight in gold. By the way, that little alpha switch in there, that guy, it's nice, but does not completely eliminate the need for a key on the bike while it's running. Wish it did, but it doesn't. BMW has this crazy thing called an immobilizer that's actually hooked into the uh, tumbler, so the key and this electronic immobilizer basically must be within proximity of each other when you start the bike. This is what it looks like. I've got it here on the left side, if you're riding the bike, the left side air intake, but essentially the little Alpha 3D printed piece is where the key slides into, stays right next to the immobilizer within the correct proximity. The only thing you're removing here is a tumbler. The interesting part about this switch is it has a one direction lock. So when you flip it on, the lock engages. So you have to pull up on it and push it forward for it to unlock and then turn the bike off. Cause that'd be pretty awkward if you're going around a track and it just vibrates itself to the off position while you're mid corner or something like that. It'd be pretty, pretty hairy there for a second, wouldn't it? So anyway, pretty neat little feature. Really like it a lot. Something that maybe some of the astute new viewers noticed, the suspension's on the bike. Getting close, we're getting real close. I can't wait to get down the road with it. I can't even tell you right now, it's so exciting. All right, cool. Weekly update done. Check you guys later. If you've made it this far, that means you're actually one of the few people who like watching these things all the way through. And I'm gonna give you a little nugget here at the end. What if I was to share the data logging off of this bike every time I went out? and then accompany that with all the suspension settings and tire pressure settings and gearing and blah, 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 all that garbage. What if I did that? Would you be interested in that? Comment down below, tell me what you think.